Popcurrent's exclusive sponsor is Bakersfield Heart Hospital. Welcome back to Pop Current. I'm Karen Wall, and today we're at the kitchen in downtown Bakersfield. Some of you may know they used to host these beautiful, elaborate cooking classes, but since we're in the COVID era now, they've really adapted with the time. So today, you're going to whip us up something yummy. So we're here with Chef Richard. He's one of the co-owners of the kitchen. And for those who don't know, what does the kitchen typically do? Well, pre-COVID, we would teach everyone how to prepare a three-course meal. And it doesn't matter if you have zero cooking experience, if you burn water. <laughs> and so now during these COVID times, you've been bringing your in-person classes online. So I'm here to demystify cooking on the shows we do on Tuesday. So we generally highlight the ingredient of the week. Yes, there's some elements of science and chemistry, blah, blah, blah. But it's not rocket science. They say monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> so this week is grape week. Our very good friend, Laura Catani, her family, they grow grapes. You'll see mm. they're very sweet. Uh, this grape is called, it's a red sealess grape called Chrissy. So what we're gonna make today is a grape gazpacho. For those who don't know, what is gazpacho? So gazpacho is traditionally a Spanish chilled tomato soup. So it's cold. It's cold and raw. And so we don't see any tomatoes no here. No tomatoes here. It's super fast to make. It's a perfect summertime dish. <laughs> All right, I can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Take out the seeds. Yeah. Oops, this thing's a little bit tougher than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Yours is one nice straight line and mine is just like this weird zigzag. So we're gonna chop this up. I don't know if you wanna trust me with a knife. No, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to hold a knife. When you chop, you'll notice you have no control. Oh, because if you hold a knife like this, it's very wobbly. And so we're just gonna rough chop this guy. And boom, boom, boom. That's it. Boom, boom, boom. All into the blender. <laughs> All into the blender. If you go ahead and dump in the the lemon juice, two, maybe three lemons. Okay. A teaspoon of red wine vinegar and a quarter teaspoon of Tabasco okay. mixed in there. So the Tabasco kind of give it not only some acidity, but uh, the, the heat will cut through the richness of the, the Greek yogurt. And then the feature ingredient, one cup of sliced grapes and one teaspoon of salt. So here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strain this. I would never think to mix any of these ingredients together. I would never think that grapes and yogurt perhaps go oh. well together. So now this is all very smooth, but we're gonna add some texture to it. We're gonna okay. garnish it with some additional sliced grapes. Oh. So put a few in there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some uh, toasted almonds for some crunch. And I'm gonna drizzle the top with a little bit of olive oil, and then some cracked pepper to finish it off. And voila. All right, cheers. Cheers. It's gonna be tangy, it's gonna be sweet, it's gonna be savory. And it's going to be crunchy. They really complement each other so well. The fat, the acidity, like you said, you did de demystify this. You made <laughs> something that looks very complex and very high end into something a, a dummy could literally do. <laughs> so we've just made gazpacho. What are we making next? So we're going to make a uh, pork tenderloin. Mm. So this basically is, runs along the back of the pig. And this is like the, the filet mignon of, of pig. Excellent. Chef's kiss. So basically, I'm just going to remove some of this uh, fat and silver skin. It helps for the seasonings and the marinade to really uh, get into the, yeah. the penetrate the meat. And then we're going to make the marinade. Quarter cup of uh, white wine and half a cup of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And I got the zest of one lemon. Okay. I have a couple tablespoons of garlic. So this is about six cloves of garlic, a combination of a uh, rosemary and oregano. A couple tablespoons of brown sugar could counterbalance the acidity. A teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk Ooh, that up. Whisk it all together. A virgin olive oil. A few pinches of salt. Very generous. Yeah. Just a little bit. And I look at recipes as merely a template or a guideline, not a chemistry experiment. Unless okay. it's baking, that's something else. Oh, uh, yeah. My, my pork tenderloin. Salt that as well and add the marinade to that. I would recommend that you uh, marinate it for a couple hours mm -hmm. or up to overnight. We're going to reverse sear it. Roast it in the oven at 250 degrees for 45 minutes. After we take it out of the oven, then we're going to sear it. So I don't really go by time because it's already cooked. There you go, now it's got that nice color like it's 
like it's been roasting in the oven. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get to hit up the sides a little bit. Fresh off the cast iron, we have yes. this beautiful piece of meat. Let's cut into so our- So we're gonna go ahead and cut it open. It's already tender, but once again, let's make it triple tender. So it should be some degree of pinkness. Okay. So I cooked it for till the internal temperature was about 135 degrees. The juiciest piece of meat. Bon appetit. The tender of the tenderloin. Yeah. Truly probably one of the best meals I've ever watched someone make and definitely one of the best meals I've ever tasted. Thank you all so much for joining us and Chef Richard this week on Popcorn. I'll see you next Friday at noon.